the Battle of Ostrich, also called the Battle by Ostrich, occurred on 2021 March 1799. It was the first battle of the War of the Second Coalition. The battle resulted in the victory of the Austrian forces, under the command of Archduke Charles, over the French forces, commanded by Jean-Baptiste Jordan. The battle occurred during Holy Wick, 1799, amid rain and dense fog. Initially, the French were able to take, and hold, Ostrich and the nearby hamlet of Hoskirch plus several strategic points on the Ostrich Marsh. As the engagement began, Habsburg numerical superiority overwhelmed French defences. By evening, the French left wing was flanked and Jordan's men retreated from Ostrich to the Fullendorf Heights. On the next morning, as Jordan considered a counter-attack, the weather broke, and he could look down on the Austrian battle array. The numbers and dispositions of the Austrians convinced him that any attack would be useless, and that he could not hope to maintain his position in the heights. As he withdrew, a portion of his right flank was cut off from the main force. Although casualties appeared even on both sides, the Austrians had a significantly larger fighting force both on the field at Ostrich and stretched along a line between Lake Constance and Ulm. French casualties amounted to 8% of the force in Austrian, approximately 4%. The French withdrew to Ingen and Stockage, where a few days later the armies engaged again, this time with greater losses on both sides and an Austrian victory. Background Initially, the rulers of Europe, such as Joseph II, Holy Roman Emperor, viewed the revolution in France as an event between the French king and his subjects, and not something in which they should interfere. As the rhetoric grew more strident, however, the other monarchies started to view events with alarm. In 1790, Leopold succeeded his brother Joseph as emperor and by 1791, he considered the situation surrounding his sister, Marie Antoinette, and her children, with greater and greater alarm. In August 1791, in consultation with French émigré nobles and Frederick William II of Prussia, he issued the Declaration of Pilnitz in which they declared the interest of the monarchs of Europe as one with the interests of Louis and his family. They threatened ambiguous, but quite serious, consequences if anything should happen to the royal family. The French Republican position became increasingly difficult. Compounding problems in international relations, French émigrés continued to agitate for support of a counter-revolution abroad. Chief among them were the Prince Condé, his son, the Duc de Bourbon, and his grandson, the Duc d'Enghien. From their base in Koblenz, immediately over the French border, they sought direct support for military intervention from the royal houses of Europe, and raised an army. On 20 April 1792, the French National Convention declared war on Austria. In this war of the First Coalition, France ranged itself against most of the European states sharing land or water borders with her, plus Portugal and the Ottoman Empire. Although the coalition forces achieved several victories at Verdun, Kaiserslautern, Neu and N, Mainz, Amberg and Würzburg, the efforts of Napoleon Bonaparte in northern Italy pushed Austrian forces back and resulted in the negotiation of the Peace of Leoben and the subsequent Treaty of Campo Formio. The treaty called for meetings between the involved parties to work out the exact territorial and remunerative details to be convened at Rastit. The French demand for more territory than originally agreed upon stalled negotiations. Despite their agreement at Campo Formio and the ongoing meetings at Rastit, the two primary combatants of the First Coalition, France and Austria, were highly suspicious of the other's motives. Several diplomatic incidents undermined the agreement. The Austrians were reluctant to cede the designated territories and the Rastit delegates could not, or would not, orchestrate the transfer of agreed-upon territories to compensate the German princes for their losses. Ferdinand of Naples refused to pay tribute to France, followed by the Neapolitan Rebellion, invasion by France, and the subsequent establishment of the Parthenopian Republic. 
Other factors contributed to the rising tensions as well. On his way to Egypt in 1798, Napoleon had stopped on the island of Malta and forcibly removed their hospitallers from their possessions. This angered Paul, Tsar of Russia, who was the honorary head of the order. The French Directory, furthermore, was convinced that the Austrians were conniving to start another war. Indeed, the weaker the French Republic seemed, the more seriously the Austrians, the Neapolitans, the Russians and the English actually discussed this possibility. Prelude Archduke Charles of Austria had taken command of the army in late January. Although he was unhappy with the strategy set forward by his brother, the Holy Roman Emperor Francis II, he had acquiesced to the less ambitious plan to which Francis and the Olic Council had agreed. Austria would fight a defensive war and would maintain a continuous defensive line from the Danube to northern Italy. The Archduke had stationed himself at Friedberg for the winter, 4.7 miles east-southeast of Augsburg. The army was already settled into cantonments in the environs of Augsburg, extending south along the Lech River. As winter broke in 1799, on the 1st of March, General Jean-Baptiste Jordan and his army of 25,000, the so-called Army of the Danube, crossed the Rhine and Kale, instructed to block the Austrians from access to the Swiss Alpine passes. The army of the Danube would ostensibly isolate the armies of the coalition in Germany from allies in northern Italy, and prevent them from assisting one another. Furthermore, if the French held the interior passes in Switzerland, they could use the routes to move their own forces between the two theatres. The army of the Danube, meeting little resistance, advanced through the Black Forest in three columns, through the Hollental, via Oberkirch and Freudenstadt, and a fourth column advanced along the north shore of the Rhine. Although Jordan might have been better advised to establish a position on the eastern slope of the mountains, he did not. Instead, he pushed across the Danube plain and took a position between Rottweil and Tuttlingen, and eventually pushing toward the imperial city of Fullendorf in Upper Swabia. News of the French advance across the Rhine took three days to reach Charles at Augsburg. The Austrian Vorhut, 17,000 men under the command of Field Marshal Friedrich Joseph Count of Nauendorf, crossed the Lech in three columns. The first at Babenhausen, marching in the direction of Biberach, the second, and strongest, at Memmingen, marching in the direction of Waldsee, and the third at Lukisch, heading in the direction of Ravensburg. The main force of 53,000 men, under the command of the Archduke, crossed the Lech by Augsburg, Landsberg and Schorngau, and six battalions of 6,600 men crossed the Danube at Ulm. Eventually, 10,000 men under the command of General Friedrich Freier von Hotzer marched north from Feldkirch in Switzerland, but they did not arrive in time to participate at either the battle at Ostrich or for the subsequent battle at Stockich. Local Ostrich was a small village with a population of 300. The village belonged to the Cistercian Imperial Abbey of Salem, an influential and wealthy ecclesiastical territory on Lake Constance. The village was largely dedicated to farming, although a stretch of the Imperial Post Road connected it and Fullendorf. A wide, flat plain, marshy in places, stretched between the base of the Fullendorf Heights and the village, low-lying hills ringed the valley, which was creased by a small stream from which the village takes its name. Ostrich itself lies almost at the northern end of this plain, but slightly south of the Danube itself. The two armies faced each other across this small and, at that time of that year, very soggy valley. Dispositions by the 7th of March, the first Austrian soldiers arrived in Ostrich. The French advance guard arrived by the 9th, under command of General François-Joseph Lefebvre, in the forward line. The 25th Demi-Brigade and Light Infantry positioned themselves between Ostrich and Hoskirch. Lefebvre also had three battalions each of the 53rd and 67th Demi-Brigades of Light Infantry. 20 squadrons of hussars, chasseurs, and dragoons, and field artillery pieces. 
By 12 March, the village and the surrounding farms were filled with lances and hussars, and by the 17th, the Austrian advance guard had established forward posts at Buckall, Altshausen and Waldsee. The remainder of Charles's army, at this point nearly 110,000 strong, had established itself along a line from Ulm to Lake Constance. By 18 March, Jordan had formed his headquarters at Fullendorf, on the heights above Ostrich. In front of him stood the largest part of his cavalry and half of his infantry. The center, including the 4th Regiment of Hussars, the 1st of Chasseurs à Cheval, and two squadrons of the 17th Dragoons, lay behind Ostrich. Under command of General Klein, Jordan distributed them in three columns, the strongest on the post road by Solgau, another on the road in the direction of Altshausen, and a third at the hamlet of Friedberg. The flank of Lefebvre's division, with 7,000 men, commanded by Laurent saint cyr extended to the Danube. By the time skirmishing began, Van Damme was still in the environs of Stuttgart, with 3,000 men, looking in vain for Austrian forces that might be stationed there, and he played no part in the battle. The far right, under command of Farino, angled south from Fullendorf to Lake Constance, or the Bodensee. The cavalry reserve of 3,000 under General Jean-Joseph Ange Dortpool included a battalion of the 53rd Demi-Brigade, and waited in close column in the environs of Fullendorf.